level, 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 5.5, comparing linear and nonlinear functions. I promise you this one is going to be much easier than the last extension. The last extension threw a lot of new, weird kind of information at us. This one's pretty straightforward. We're basically just looking at what is linear and what is not linear. All right, so we should know at this point that the graph of a linear function shows constant change or constant um, constant rate of change. So a nonlinear function would not show a constant uh, rate of change. So it does not have a constant rate of change. So now we just have to look at how can we figure out if something has a constant rate of change when looking at different types of information, like a table or a graph. So when I'm looking at a table, how do I know if this has a constant rate of change? Well, the x values have to be increasing uh, with the same amount of uh, change as the y values. So let's take a look here. The x values, see, I'm increasing by 3, increasing by 3, and increasing by 3. Now, the y values this one going from 40 to 32 seems like it's decreasing by 8, and again decreasing by 8, and again decreasing by 8. Now the x increases by 3, the y decreases by 8, so the rate of change, the, the change that's happening every single time from every value is always the same. It's always constant. So this function is a linear function. Now let's look at this one. I go from 1 to 3, which is plus 2. I go from 3 to 5, which is plus 2, and I go from 5 to 7, which is plus 2. Now on the y's, I'm going from 2 to 11, which is plus 9. I go from 11 to 33, which is plus 22. I go from 33 to 88, which is plus 55. The, y, the x's are all increasing at a constant rate, but the y's are not, adding 9, adding 22, adding 55. So this is not linear. Both the x and the y do not increase at constant rates. Now let's take a look at when we're looking at a function. Now a should look really weird to everybody. We haven't looked at anything like this before. Normally when we're looking at linear functions, what you should have kind of noticed is that it's always a straight line. The straight line, the slope being always the same, the slope is the rate of change. The slope shows me that it's always increasing at the same uh, speed and at the same intensity. So this, it kind of looks like the slope changes. It's, it's steep, and then it becomes less steep. It's almost so that it's horizontal, and then it becomes even more and even more steep. So this looks like it's, you know, the slope is constantly changing, so the rate of change is constantly changing. That is not linear. Whereas B, B is a horizontal line. It's a straight line directly across, B is most certainly linear because that rate of change, even though in this case it's zero, um, is constant. Now let's look at three. Which of these equations represents a nonlinear function? Huh. So how can I tell if an equation is linear or nonlinear? Let's see if we can write them all basically in what's called slope-intercept form. Is it possible to do that? Because um, we know that slope-intercept form is the form for linear equations. Well, A looks like it already is. It's just a horizontal line at, at 4.7. B, Y equals MX, where M just happens to be pi. So the Y-intercept here is plus zero, so there's no Y-intercept. Um, see, D, Y equals, and then I basically just have to distribute 4x minus 4, so it's a slope of 4 and a y-intercept of negative 4, that's linear. Now C, what do we got here? I have y equals and then 4 over x. So what is that like? That's basically the same thing as 4 times 1 over x. Have we ever seen that before? 1 over x? No, we have not. This is not a linear function. We need to have 1x, not 1 over x. We're not, we're not used to seeing that before. So this is our one that's not linear. C would be the one that's not linear there. So we're basically just trying to look to see if we can get it into 
a format, a slope intercept format that we know is a linear function. And now let's look at our last example here. <clears throat> account A earns simple interest. Account B earns what's called compound interest. The table shows the balance for five years. We want to graph the data and compare the graphs. We want to see if we have some sort of linear relationship or if there's something different happening uh, with different types. So let's say I graph account A in blue and account B in red. Okay, so let's put some some tick marks on our graph here. I have five years. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, and five. And then in terms of the monies, we go from 100 up to 150. So let's start 100 at about here. And then I'll go... 110, 120, 130. Oops. Maybe I should go down farther. Start 100 here. 110, 120, 130, 140, 150. And then we'll just go a little bit above uh, later. Alrighty, so let's start with the blue. My first account balance starts at 100, so that's my y intercept actually. And then after one year it jumps up to 110 after two years it jumps to 120 after three years it jumps to 130 after four years it jumps to 140 and after five years up to 150 a nice steady increase uh, and we get some some good uh, interest accrued there now let's look at how account b fares out it starts again at 100, so that's also there. But after one year, it jumps up to 110. Okay, still the same. After two years, it jumps up to 121. So it kind of skips me there. A little bit above 120. And then after the next year, oops, it should be down here. Getting ahead of myself. After the next year, it jumps up to 133. So even a little bit higher than that. After the next year, it jumps up to 146, so it's almost way up there already. And then the last year, 160. So what does it look like is happening here? It kind of starts in the same spot, but it doesn't seem to flow as linear as the other one. That's a pretty wavy line that I just drew there. Um, try to connect it a little bit better. and then one more and then one more and for the other one since I know that it's a straight line I'm actually just gonna draw a line that way we can clearly see um, that we have a little bit of difference happening between these two things right that's my linear my straight increase my account B and my account a is just a nice linear account B looks like it's slowly pulling away from it and it's slowly gonna increase a little bit and a little bit more um, so that's what we're looking at. Account A looks pretty linear. Account B, uh, definitely not. Alrighty. I think, yep, that is all. Uh, duty assigned problems. Hopefully this um, particular video is easier than the last one. And uh, write down any questions, and I will talk to you guys later.